Hello everybody, I hope you are doing well in this presentation. I'd like to give you some information about two papers uh, in the field of IoT. The first one is an energy efficient IoT communication scheme for wireless local area networks that published in IEEE Infocom 2019. The second one is a study of autonomous drone-based IoT device management in indoor environments, which is published in 2019 and in ACM sitcom. Okay, uh, let me tell you what's the problem statement. As you can see here, an access point can uh, serve both IoT devices and standard Wi-Fi devices. Actually, the access point takes advantage of uh, time division multiplexing. That means it serves both different uh, devices in different time slots. So there is no interaction and interference between Wi-Fi devices and IoT ones. What is the objective? You know, in such wireless local area network, WLAN, we need to design an energy efficient scheme to enable wireless communications, both uplink and downlink communications between access point and IoT devices. Uh, you know, in this paper, in mathematical foundation section, um, you know, others provided something like the baseband waveform, radio signals, and so forth. You know, there are provided some formulations. If you are interested in this mathematical part, you can take a look at the paper. So let's skip this uh, slide. Um, in this paper, a practical physical design is provided to enable downlink data transmission from an OFDM-based broadband access point to the multiple narrowband IoT devices. As you can see here, they first presented a frame format for data transmission, and then they presented a physical design for a single user case, and then they extended um, this one to the uh, physical design for multi-user case. The frame format, as you can see, uh, consists of preamble field, which is used for synchronization and channel estimation, the signal field, and pilot field, and data field. The uh, physical design for a single user case includes local carrier frequency, bandwidth of low path filter, sampling rate of digital to analog converter, phase shift compensation, timing and frequency, uh, synchronization, uh, signal detection for a single user case, uh, which, is cons uh, which consists of two steps, channel estimation and channel uh, equ um, equalization. And um, here the downlink um, physical design for multi-user case includes uh, the number of IoT devices, which can be K number. Uh, you know, uh, the downlink physical design for single user case is focused on the case where the access point uses a single subcarrier to serve only one IoT device. But here, um, you know, they extended the downlink uh, physical design to the case where the access point uses K number of subcarriers to serve K IoT devices. Then uh, it includes inter subcarrier interference, inter symbol interference, signal detection for multi user case. Okay. Um, the next objective was providing an uplink uh, physical design for data transmission uh, from multiple. Uh, IoT devices to an um, access point. As you can see here, it consists of two parts transmitter physical for IoT devices and receiver physical uh, for access point. Uh, the first one includes um, phase shift compensation, the settling uh, time of uh, digital to analog converter and uh, low power, uh, low pass filter. Uh, the receiver physical for access point includes 
um, bandpass filter, timing and frequency synchronization, FFT and signal detection. Um, okay. Uh, here is the important part of this paper, I think. Um, as I already mentioned, uh, the access point needs to serve both standard Wi-Fi and IoT devices. To do so, uh, they propose a time division multiplexing scheme. The access point um, predictably reserve a time slot for communicating between itself and IoT devices. During the IoT time slot, the access point can silence the uh, standard devices, but by um, broadcasting a network allocation vector packet. During Wi-Fi time slot, IoT devices can switch to a sleep mode to reduce their power consumption. The, you know, the duration of an IoT time slot can be either fixed or adaptively set depending on the system requirements. Uh, this MAC protocol includes four subsections. The first one is uh, channel assignment. In an IoT time slot, uh, the proposed physical design can support a K number of parallel independent channels for uplink and uh, downlink data transmission bet between access point and IoT devices. Uh, for a new or wake up IoT device, it first uh, listens to each of K channels and then chooses uh, the one with least traffic at its initial channel. After the selection, it will stick to this channel unless the access point you know, allocates it to another channel. On the um, access point side, uh, it maintains a list of active IoT devices um, you know, uh, with the global information, it can perform an optimization procedure to adjust uh, channel assignment um, to improve the channel efficiency. The downlink uh, transmission, you know, uh, this proposed MAC, MAC protocol is a semi-central uh, protocol as they uh, referred it in a paper, where the access point is considered as a controller for resource allocation. Um, it has full degree of freedom for downlink transmission scheduling on the K number of channels. And in the download channels, the access point can predictably broadcast uh, some, uh, you know, beacon frames that contain all information about the network. Then the access point can also inform the IoT devices of its uh, decision for channel reassignment. Then the uplink uh, transition, you know, there are, as I've mentioned, there are copper channels that can be used for uplink um, transmission. It's important to coordinate the IoT devices on those channels for um, uplink transmission. So in this paper, uh, they designed a special frame for this purpose. Um, especially an IoT device keeps listening its channel for a downlink data transmission. Uh, the uplink power control is the last um, part of this uh, MAC protocol. Uh, you know, a power control mechanism has been implemented for uplink data transmission. For each um, IoT device, it estimates the signal strength of the downlink and trigger frame, based on which it adjusts its transmission power for uplink data transmission. Uh, by doing so, um, an access point uh, can receive uh, similar, uh, similar signal power from an IoT devices on uh, at different channels. Uh, this mechanism improves the performance of AP, um, you know, the access point signal detection. Uh, this paper, you know, uh, uh, had some generic information, and then the important part was, I think, the MAC protocol design. 
Okay, I'll explain you the next part. Okay, the second paper is a study of autonomous drone-based IoT device management in indoor environments. What's the contributions of this paper? The authors tried to provide a drone-enabled IoT device management uh, to create autonomous indoor maps containing wireless devices. And they tried to uh, analyze the impact of their device management platform on uh, drones battery and on drones uh, energy consumption. To understand the limitation of uh, drone battery, uh, they simulate large area with different number of IoT devices uh, to have more devices and to optimize the flight path. Um, in this figure, uh, you know, the drone has to be as easy as possible to control autonomously. It should be small enough to fly indoors and it should be uh, strong enough to carry, uh, for example, smartphone or IoT board for device detection and such like. As you can see here, to obtain fully autonomous area exploration, the device detection platform and drone controller fly with the drone and uh, that uh, this can prevent user involvement and dependency to a ground control uh, station and here uh, the smartphone uh, is controlling the drone and powers a raspberry pi actually the raspberry pi um, performs the device detection by receiving wi-fi and uh, Wi-Fi probes request and uh, Bluetooth messages and then starts it automatically at startup. Uh, the drones that are used in this paper uh, fly at an altitude of around 2 meters uh, to more explore the area by avoiding, uh, for example, uh, special barriers like tables, chairs, and so forth. The platform for device management includes the area explorations. Authors considered uh, three different area explorations, random direction, boundary, follow, uh, boundary following, and the hybrid one. Uh, you know, mm, this picture shows the random direction. As you can see, the drone start here and stop at this point. And, um, you know, the drone flies up and obstacles like a wall and randomly choose another direction. And uh, until no obstacle blocks the drone. Uh, this figure follow boundary uh, shows the principal uh, actually working flow of boundary. And the drone flies in its uh, headings until it recognizes an obstacle. Then it, uh, for example, turns right and then turns left uh, to follow the boundary as closely as possible. And the third one is a hybrid one, uh, which is by default the random direction strategy. Uh, during the movement, uh, the drone detects the uh, increasing signal strange and, uh, you know, then others allow the drone to follow the signal, you know, this uh, dotted line. At the peak of the signal strain, the drone falls back the random direction control mode. Um, the third part is device detection. For device detection of Wi-Fi devices, authors uh, use a special um, things, next month firewire firewire patch to enable Wi-Fi monitor mode at Raspberry Pi. And um, the discovery of Bluetooth devices um, occurs using Python script receiving the messages, the devices mapping of all Wi-Fi and uh, Bluetooth um, devices includes list entries with uh, timestamp, MAC address, and receive signal strange indicator. 
then the relative positioning, you know, to calculate the relative positioning of each encountered device uh, and be able to generate device maps. Um, authors in this paper define a relative coordinate system uh, for a university building. Uh, that each room has a reference frame with an origin at which the drone starts exploring the room. Uh, from its start position, the drone estimates its own position uh, using direction, velocity, time. Before the flight, um, drone, you know, before the flight, authors perform a time synchronization between a smartphone and Raspberry Pi. Uh, to detect the device locations using match-like timestamps. Um, you know, there was a use case for privacy and security. Uh, to improve the user privacy, the synchronized device positions for MAC addresses and uh, device types to end user devices. Uh, they provided a privacy and security use case, but you know they didn't provide many information about this part. And uh, you know, uh, combined with indirect localization at the user device, uh, they inform users about nearby wireless sensing devices, uh, which potentially impairing their privacy. Uh, you know, they um, able to distinguish between remote and local wireless devices by comparing network scans uh, with their indoor maps in using included MAC addresses. Uh, so network administrators uh, could more easily recognize unauthorized wireless devices and, uh, you know, using a wide list of Network devices, they can discover locally and start malicious wireless devices. Uh, these are the two references uh, that I've used for this presentation. I hope you enjoy.